Hi, I am Mazhar Hussain and I am presenting you a VHDL demo which is based on an FPGA device. This tutorial will introduce you how to create and download the design of a 7 segment display created in VHDL to an FPGA board. In this tutorial, we are going to use a Xilinx IC design suit which is the synthesis, placement and simulation tool. To work on your own computers, a limited version of Xilinx ISC webpack can be downloaded for free from the Xilinx website. FPGA design process involves the same sequence of actions for every FPGA design software suit. That is, first to create a project, choose a name of your project, an FPGA device, in this case an access to board, a default language which is VHDL and then add a file to project, both HDL description of the target device and test benches of behavioral simulation. Uh, do this behavioral simulation to see if your logic is working. Then you have to run synthesis. Uh, finally, implementation and machine generation is the follow-up step. Now we can start from the first step by creating a project. Launch IEC Project Navigator. A screen like that will be displayed. Start a new project. In this dialog box, first choose the location of the project. We will name it to 7 segment display because we are going to implement a driver to operate 7 segment display mounted on FPGA port. Leave top level source type as HDL. A 7 segment display is a form of electronic display device for displaying decimal numerals. 7 segment displays are widely used in digital clocks, electronic meters and other electronic devices for displaying numerical information. After clicking next, select the target device, choose the family, for example Spartan 3, the package, XST as synthesis tool, ISIM as simulator and VHDL as preferred language. Click next and finish. Now you can see source pen with project hierarchy and navigation window along with the editing area. Before going further, it's better to discuss about implementation strategy to design VHDL module that operates seven segment display connected to a FPGA board. At first, we need to create a segment decoder that should decode a 4-bit binary number into 7 segments. A 4 to 1 mux is needed to select one of the input data and push it to segment decoder. A clock divider module is also helpful to slow down the clock so that the data should be visible on segment display because the FPG clock is 50 MHz. This can be achieved by making a counter. You might notice in the first page of the tutorial that the FPG board have 4 segment displays in the segment driver module which will host all the three components that is segment decoder, 4 to 1 marks and clock divider provides a way to select these four displays to push data to each display by using multiplexing. Finally the top design will use segment driver as component and link 8 switch inputs from FPGA port to segment driver as well as take the output of 7 segment decoder and selection outputs of 4 displays to FPGA port. Now it's time to define a VHDL module of a 7 segment decoder. In this case we have 4 bit PCD which should be decoded into a decimal number. Right click near project hierarchy and select new source. Type the name of the entity of the VHDL code. The BCD to 7 segment decoder needs to have a 4 bit binary digit. Click on bus to get 4 bit input signal. Now name 7 output signals as segment A, segment B, segment C, segment D, segment E, segment F and segment G and choose the direction of all segments as output. Click next. Now you can see the complete port definition. Click finish. In the editor pane, you can see the VHDL packages from the IEEE library and the entity containing the signals for BCD to 7 segment decoder. Under the architecture, we need to initialize a process with sensitivity list. The sensitivity list contain digit, 
a 4 bit input signal. A 7 bit variable with the name decoded data in line 48 is declared to save all decoded signals. A case statement is declared under the process which depends on 4 bit digit input. So in case of digit input 0000, 0, 0, 0 all except the least significant bit of variable decode data or 1. The bits of the variable decode data represent each segment. Similarly, if the digit is 0001, then only two bits of the decode data will be 1, rest will be 0. One can write the case for all possible 4-bit values, starting from decimal value 0 to 9 or hexadecimal value up to f. After the end of the case, now assign each bit of variable decode data to corresponding segment. For example, bit 7 of decode data to segment A. For some circuit, a negative logic is required to operate a display. For such cases, instead of changing the whole code, one can just put a NOT gate in front of each bit of variable decode data while assigning it to segments. After assigning all the values of variable decode data to corresponding segments, now we can end the process and behavioral architecture. Save the project and if implementation view is selected, check the syntax by right-clicking on synthesize in process pane and by selecting run. A green mark on synthesize confirms that the syntax is correct. Next will be the PHDL module of clock divisor to generate a slow clock for multiplexer. Right-click near project hierarchy and select new source. Type the name of the entity of the BHDL code. Click next and specify the input output signals of the circuit. The clock divider works like a counter. So it needs a clock, enable and a reset signal as input and a 16-bit data clock signal as output. Click next and finish. In the source pane, the set module will appear as shown. In the editor pane, after the entity list and inside the architecture, initiate a process with the sensitivity list containing clock and reset signal. We now declare an internal 16-bit variable that will increment with each clock cycle and later give the final counts to data CLK, which is the counter output. An if statement is declared, which depends on input reset. If reset equal to 1, then the count should be reset to 0. Else if the enable is 1 and there is a clock event and the clock is equal to 1, then increment count by 1. After the end of if statement, the value of variable count should be passed to counter output which is data CLK. You notice that we are using operator plus in this module to get the increments. It is necessary to include the standard library packages that support the keywords and operators for the VHDL language. To check the syntax, save this project and select the clock divider in the source pane. Then in process pane, click on check syntax. A green mark on check syntax shows that the syntax is correct. Next step will be to define a VHDL module of a segment driver which will act like a multiplexer and will use both clock divider and segment decoder as component. Right click near project hierarchy and select new source. Type the name of the entity of the VHDL code. After choosing the name, click next and specify input output signals of the circuit. The segment driver needs to have 4 bit input signals. Display A, Display B, Display C display D and then 7 output signals with the name seg A, seg B, seg C, seg D, seg E, seg F, seg G which represent each segment of the 7 segment display. There will be 4 more output signals to select each 7 segment display mounted on FPGA port. Remember there are 4 segment displays on FPGA port. And finally a clock as input. Click next. Now you can see the complete port definition for this module. Click finish. In the source pane, the set module will appear as shown. In the editor pane, include IEEE standard logic earth and IEEE standard logic unsigned, which are the basic VHDL packages from the IEEE library that defines the keywords and operators for the language. A component of the segment decoder and clock divider is declared inside the architecture in which it is instantiated. The component declaration defines the ports of the lower level function. We need to declare three internal signals to take the value from one module to the other. A 4-bit temporary data, a 16-bit signal clock word, 
and a signal slow clock. A port map of segment decoder gets the 4-bit data from temporary data signal into digit and return the output in terms of segment A, B, C, D, E, F and G. The next component that is instantiated is clock divider which will get the clock signal CLK as input and return a 16-bit data to internal signal clock word. Notice that the enable and reset signals are hard-coded as 1 and 0 because we want this module to be running all the time as the purpose of this module is to slow down the FPGA clock which is 50 MHz. This way the 16th bit of the clock word will go to the internal signal slow clock. The slow clock will later be used in the process to implement multiplexer. The process sensitivity list contains the clock as shown. As in the process, we are going to write a code of a 4 to 1 multiplexer. We need 2-bit selection switches. We can name it display selection and declare it as variable. The code for multiplexer depends on if slow clock equal to 1, then in case of display selection 00, temporary data will get the input data for display A. In the meanwhile, display A will be selected. Note that the select display pins on FPGA board are active low, which means if we set to 0, they will be on, and if we set to 1, they will be off. We can increment the display selection by 1 to move to the next case. Similarly, if display selection equal to 0, 1, temporary data will get display B, and select display B will be on. And if display selection is 1, 0, temporary data will get data for display C and select display C will be active. The fourth and last case is when display selection is 1 1 or other. Temporary data will get data for display D and select display D will be active. Now the code is complete so we can end the case, the if statement, the process and the architecture. After saving the project, notice that both segment decoder and clock divider are now linked to segment driver in the source pan. To check the syntax, right click on synthesize in process pan and select run. A green mark on synthesize shows that the syntax is correct. Now it's time to define the final BHDL module which is called top design to link all physical switches and displays of FPGA board to the signals of segment driver. Right click near project hierarchy and select new source. Type the name of the entity of the BHDL code. After choosing name, click next and specify the input output signals of the circuit. There are 8 switches on FPGA board, input clock and 4 output signal for display selection. Additionally, 7 segments as output. To identify that these signals are from this module, we can name them with the prefix top. For example, top seg A. Click next and finish. In the source pan, the set module will appear as shown. Right click on the module and set it as top module. Click yes. In the editor pan, now a component of segment driver is declared inside the architecture in which it is instantiated. 4-bit internal signals AI, BI, CI and DI are declared in this code to provide the link between signals in segment drivers and switch inputs. In the port map, all the signals will be mapped accordingly. For example, the display A linked to AI, display B linked to BI, display C linked to CI and display D linked to DI. Then the corresponding segments link to each other and finally the select display outputs and clock will be linked. In the end, now each switch will be connected to each bit of 4-bit internal signals AI and BI. As we have 8 switches in FPGA board, we can hard code any number to the rest of two 4-bit signals CI and DI. If you have more switches, we can connect them to these two 4-bit signals. After saving the project, notice that the segment driver is now linked to top design in the source pan. Before checking the syntax, we should include the IEEE library packages if they are not there and save the project again. To check the syntax, right click on synthesize in process pan and select run. The synthesize is complete with a warning as we are only using the most significant bit that is bit 16 of uh, clock word and because the others are not used that's why they are trimmed during synthesize which is okay for this design before downloading the design to fpga board we need to assign signals to the physical inputs and outputs of an fpga which of course are switches for inputs and segment displays for output a user constraint file commonly known as ucf file is required to fulfill this requirement 
from the digiland web page we can download the ucf file for nexus 2 spartan 3e board download master ucf file for the nexus 2 1200 from the table to the same seven segment display folder unzip the compressed ucf file now you can see the uncompressed ucf file in the folder hierarchy to include the ucf file in the project right click in the source pane and click on add source from the pop-up window of seven segment display folder choose the unzip ucf file press ok now you can see the ucf file listed under the same project hierarchy in the source pane select the ucf file and you will notice a change in process pane where no selection is available that is user constraints open it and click on edit constraints the ucf file now open in editor window we need to set the constraints for clock input for seven segment display and for display selections and finally the input switches replace all names with the name listed in top design entity now uncomment the constraints by removing hash from the preface and replace the names set the constraint for clock and seven segment displays by replacing the names with the entity list of top design now uncomment and replace the outputs for display selections finally uncomment all eight switches and replace them with the name selected for top design entity after specifying the correct pin assignment, save the project and select the top design file in source pen and move on to the next step to generate the bit scrumming file. In process view, right click on implement design and select run. This will translate the design according to the particular FPGA. A green mark shows that the implement design process is completed successfully. Now run the process generate scrumming file. This will generate the actual configuration bits into top design.bit file that can be used to program the Spartan 3 board which is Nexus 2 to behave like the module we created in VHDL. Now that we have the programming file, we can program the Nexus 2 board using the tool provided by Digiland that is ADAPT. Connect the Nexus 2 board via USB cable to your PC or laptop. Open ADAPT to download the module. When ADAPT is open and if Nexus 2 FPGA board is connected, it should recognize the FPGA board. See the upper right corner displaying the name of the board which is Nexus 2. Now select the top sign.bit file generated for 7 segment display from the project folder. Click yes on the warning pop-up and program the FPGA by selecting program. Select yes on the warning pop-up again. Soon after you will notice a change in lights on Nexus 2 FPGA board on the right. On this FPGA board we have these 8 switches as inputs and these 4 7 segment displays as output. Now if you remember we assign first 4 switches as input to first display to the right and other 4 switches to the next display. And we hard coded a value FF for the remaining 2 displays as shown. Now that the 7 segment display module is running on FPGA board, so let's test it. By changing the position of first 4 switches, the rightmost display is showing the correct decimal number. Now if we change these 4 switches, the second display starts showing the decimal numbers that correspond to the binary inputs given through these switches. This experiment verifies the VHDL code for 7 segment display that we implemented during this tutorial.